course called Beyond the Body, everyone has experienced what he would call a sense of being transported beyond himself. This feeling of liberation far exceeds the dream of freedom sometimes hoped for in special relationships. It is the sense of actual escape from limitations. If you will consider what this, quote, transportation really entails, you will realize that it is a sudden unawareness of the body and the joining of yourself and something else in which your mind enlarges to encompass it. It becomes part of you as you unite with it, and both become whole as neither is perceived as separate. What really happens is that you have given up the illusion of a limited awareness and lost your fear of union. The love that instantly replaces it extends to what has freed you and unites with it. And while this lasts, you are not uncertain of your identity and would not limit it. You have escaped from fear to peace, asking no questions of reality, but merely accepting it. You have accepted this instead of the body and have let yourself be one with something beyond it simply by not letting your mind be limited by it. And then people will, even when they talk about near-death experiences, this paragraph always comes to mind uh, about out-of-body experiences and so on and so forth. This can occur regardless of the physical distance that seems to be between you and what you join, of your respective positions in space and of your difference in size and seeming quality. Time is not relevant. It can occur with something past, present, or anticipated. The something can be anything and anywhere, a sound, a sight, a thought, a memory, and even a general idea without specific reference. Yet in every case, you join it without reservation because you love it and would be with it. And so you rush to meet it letting your limits melt away, suspending all the quote laws your body obeys and gently setting them aside. And in the next paragraph there's a sentence that you are not really lifted out of it. It cannot contain you. I think that's a great sentence. Because it even gets away from the sense of being like lifted out of the body. There is no out-of-body experience. <coughs> yeah, like, There's no in-the-body experience. Yeah. Or, you, or you take everybody with you, you know, yeah. and it's actually everybody who's already there. <laughs> Jesus asked the question for us all tonight, which do you want, freedom of the mind or freedom of the body? For both you cannot have one. And it's kind of like, we went through three paragraphs where he was kind of saying, that you'll use one as means and one as ends. So whichever you pick, is the answer to this question, you will use the other one as means. And that's what we've all done in our so-called lives in this world, is we've picked the body as the end, <laughs> and we've used our mind as means to serve the body. But now, it's like, it's a Holy Spirit saying, okay, now we'll turn it around. You want to have a free mind, and you can, let me use your body to you know, express miracles. And, and the beginning of this section that we just read is, is one of the clearest statements in the Course about um, mind bodies. You know, it's got that famous kind of line, minds are joined, bodies are not, kind of a thing. It's also got the idea that we were talking about tonight, too, that's, that's just so basic to the whole Course. And, that's, and he repeats it over and over in the text, I mean, in the workbook, too, but it says, mind cannot attack. He says it twice in there. If minds could really attack, then guilt would be real and justified. But the, the ego, the deceived mind, is so convinced that mind can attack, that it's so convinced that it's guilty that it, it goes on in this section to talk about what it tries to do to displace or to get rid of this guilt, that it's positively sure is real. You know, it's absolutely positively sure that it's guilty. It's convinced. It's like locked in split and fighting itself. And, and to me, this is one of the best kind of sections in the Course, really getting at those two levels, that minds are joined, bodies are not. And the paragraph on page 359 um, that, that begins, it begins, what could God give? 
but knowledge of himself. <coughs> he really gets into, this is what the deceived mind is trying to do to hold on to the guilt. It, it kind of goes, um, you can start with that sentence, the belief that you could give and get something else other than the knowledge of God, something outside yourself has cost you the awareness of heaven and of your identity. Now he starts to get into, this is the main thing that, that is going on with the deception. And you have done a stranger thing than you yet realize. You have displaced your guilt to your body from your mind. See, the mind is like so convinced that it's guilty. It will not, it's not going to try to mince words with God on this. You know, it's, it's so convinced that it's guilty that it's going to, it's convinced that it has to displace this guilt onto the body. Yet a body cannot be guilty, for it can do nothing of itself. You who think you hate your body, deceive yourself. You hate your mind. But this is getting to the heart of it. That, you know, people, a lot of times you hear people talk about, oh, I'm too fat, I'm too thin, my body's breaking down, I turned 40, I turned 50, I turned 70, you know, I'm getting old, I'm getting wrinkly. I, you know, the sense of I hate... I hate my body, I hate my body, you know. And and really what the Course is saying is, you know, that's all just trying to dump it. On the, you hate your mind. <laughs> but as soon as we can start to see how deep this hatred is in our mind, then we can start to change our mind. Because then we know where the problem is. <laughs> the body's got nothing to do with it. You hate your mind, for guilt has entered into it and it would remain separate from your brothers, which it cannot do. Minds are joined, bodies are not. Only by assigning to the mind the properties of the body does separation seem to be possible. This is where the whole idea of, of separate minds, mm. your mind, my mind, mm. kind of like every person here in the room has their own private mind. <laughs> and the ego would have a sleep, and, and here comes the course, and it's like, uh, no way. And it is mind that seems to be fragmented in private and alone. Its guilt, which keeps it separate, is projected to the body, which suffers and dies because it is attacked to hold the separation in the mind and let it not know its identity. This is where sickness comes from. Bodies can be sick. I mean, this that seems like a ludicrous idea right. in the world that the bodies can't be sick. Well, <coughs> you know, we've got a lot of evidence, it seems, in the, with the body's eyes that bodies can be. But the mind is sick. The body, yeah, the body is, is just like this neutral thing that is going to witness to the mind whatever it wants. Right. But as long as we, we keep seeing the body is sick, then you, know, you can get into level confusion and calling forth miracles to heal the body. And it's like still saying sickness is real. Sickness is in the body. Sickness is in the body and it's real. And Holy Spirit, please, you got to do something, you know, to heal me. <laughs> right. It's just to admit that the body could be sick. If the body could be sick, yeah. really sick, what does that say about God? I mean, where... Where does this come from? This, this is what I told this last night, but this is interesting. Sunday night I was watching cable and you know, flipping through, and there's this Channel 6 in Lexington that they have run religious tapes and stuff. But uh, this one lady, uh, Elizabeth Clare Prophet, came, and uh, I like her, like the things that she said, and I was kind of watching and listening to her. And she said that. Uh, uh, abortion was abortion was not letting a spirit come into this plane okay to experience what this plane was about and to have uh, abortion was hence because of that a sin against the Holy Spirit and I thought about that for a second and I turned it off and just took my book I just put it up and I said, well, what, what's really going on here? What's it trying to say? I just let it fall open and read, and it said, uh, to say that God sees sin in any form 
okay is to say that he is insane. To say that he is insane? Right. So, I, that's good enough for me. I'm close to back up. Sounds good to me too, right? <laughs> Yeah, but, um, and he's got insane. But uh, I like the idea, uh, and I went to bed that night, and uh, actually I woke up, and it just seemed like all kinds of barriers had fallen away, and it was just like a beam, you know, with God, you know, going, I can't hardly describe it, but, you know, he's, there's, there's nothing, else. he's not trying to stop anything on the other side, you know, all this jump that we have put in, in, in front of us and here we are. It's all us. Every bit of it is us that we put there. And the only thing that he wants to do is be one. Yeah. Anytime you talk about individual spirits, it's like there you go again. Yeah. You know, little separations between everything, you yeah. know, so might as well put a body around it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's quite a leap of mindset. Uh, I know when we were in Iowa recently, we were talking about these ideas, and I was kind of using that idea of like little bodies here, and I had I said, no, this is kind of the way I saw it. The spirits come in, and then they go out, and then they go, <laughs> I was going like this, and I was describing this. And what I was describing that day, it's kind of like, well, think about it for a minute. You have this immortal, infinite soul that's totally expansive there, and then kind of... <laughs> Going down into this finite squeezing, little, being, squeezing into this finite, being contained, in. being contained in this <laughs> finite little thing called the body, you know, and, and it's like when you start to take a look at that, it does seem kind of silly that, you know, we kind of use a lot of metaphors of the ones that are just sitting there watching a screen and then you keep, you know, you keep seeing images until you realize you don't want to judge anymore and you don't have no need for idols anymore and then the screen literally disappears, but kind of getting other metaphors like that.